Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us this evening for our, our masterclass on sky allotments and a reintroduction to ACRI, our steel retaining wall. Um, I'm Catherine Barrett, MD of Furniture Tubes. Um, and I'm joined, I'm in our factory actually in Kent, and I'm joined by Esteban, our lead designer um, oh. from home uh, with a lovely backdrop. Um, and we're gonna split this, we're gonna split this presentation. Um, I'm gonna walk through some of the, the, the great kind of things that we've seen around rooftops and actually allotments that we've seen over the last years and some ideas that we think um, are, are great. Then I'm going to talk about a few of our products that have worked particularly well in the last year or so on rooftops and have helped with allotments. And then Esteban is going to focus on uh, ACRI, our steel retaining wall, and it's really a reintroduction. We launched this last year, but we've been working hard on making it even more sim simpler, more straightforward to specify um, and install, actually. So we've modularized it, something that we like to do a lot with our products. Um, to make them as um, easy and straightforward as possible. Um, what we've done is we do have everyone on mute. Um, we would love to hear your questions, but what we'd like is if you could put them in the chat um, section so that we can then look at them at the end. So what we'll do is we'll address questions um, at the end. Uh, Ernest will monitor them, our, our marketing manager will monitor them as we're going through. So if there's anything that seems really pertinent, he'll, he'll flag it but otherwise um, we'll address them at the end. We'd love to hear your questions or thoughts or ideas. Um, and also we're recording this session so that it can be, uh, people can access it again um, later on. But thanks very much for joining us. Cool, so a little bit about um, Furnitubes. Um, I'm sure most of you know the name Furnitubes. Um, we're over 70 years old. Um, and we've got a lot of experience with all things outdoors. Um, and we've gone through lots of sort of iterations, I would say, in our history. Um, in the last couple of years, we've really spent time sort of refining um, what we've learnt um, and looking at a number of our, our modular ranges um, in terms of how we can really help uh, high streets, uh, public realm, gardens, roof terraces, uh, really be fantastic spaces for everyone to enjoy. So we, we really believe that everyone should have access to great outdoor space and that our furniture helps that because it's, it's uh, accessible, it's made in the UK, um, you can create fantastic um, bespoke schemes but using standard products. So reintroduction to ACRI and the green rooftop experience. Um, so I'm sure many of you are interested in rooftops and allotments, and that's why you've, you've joined this, this call this evening. Um, so we've seen that there's, throughout the country, um, there is a lot of rooftop space that's underutilized, but it's been growing and growing over the last few years. We certainly see many more rooftops um, schemes uh, in the last couple of years than we've seen before. And then we're starting to see more interest in allotments, which is why we thought this would be a, an interesting um, masterclass to run to sort of show you what we've seen and what we've learned. So what we'll do is we'll explore the rise of rooftop led schemes um, and the possibilities that we see in transforming these into um, spaces where we can grow vegetables, we can grow herbs as well as plants. Um, and as I said, we're going to reintroduce you to ACRI, which is our steel retaining wall, um, which has helped with these um, allotment schemes as well. So you'll hopefully get some ideas um, about either you've got ideas already or these will give some ideas about how we can use these great rooftop um, spaces to grow products as well as plants. Um, how modular solutions can help you with that vision um, and save cost and then how um, our steel retaining wall ACRI can help with that in terms of de defining spaces for allotments. Um, okay, so schemes with rooftops are on the rise. Um, I'm sure everyone here has either been on a rooftop or had the opportunity to design a rooftop or even install a rooftop. I know we've got some contractors joining us here this evening as well. Um, so climate change and studies have suggested there is a need for more sustainable living and that's across all sectors. So 
we're really encouraged. Obviously, we're encouraged by public realm as much green space as possible. And uh, we're fortunate to have the parks and the green spaces that we do have. Rooftops are really another great opportunity to expand that. So every opportunity to green, green the grey, um, we think is a good one. Um, over the last 10 years, green living or, or just having a great space on a rooftop um, has grown. And we see that as growing in the future. Rooftops, like courtyards in developments, are seen as an extra space, another, another room, a communal space that's attractive to, to residents, or whether it's in office buildings, another space for, for staff to enjoy space outside. Um, glad to hear that in London, um, elevated green space in 2019 covered more space than Hyde Park, and we just hope that that will keep increasing. Um, not, it's good, obviously, for the environment. It's great for the residents. Developers also see this as a great marketing tool. You know, it's, it's great to have an extra outdoor space. If you're um, living in a flat in an urban environment, um, to have outdoor space, um, a beautiful outdoor space, uh, is seen as a real marketing tool for developers. And that's why we're seeing it that, that um, you know, many, many um, developments want them for you know to attract residents but also because they they have to um the legislation um and so that's where we see it's a great opportunity we've gone from kind of very plain tarmac rooftops to then having some furniture on them to now the really exciting things that can be done with rooftops in terms of creating great spaces, whether it's for relaxing, whether it's for um, children to, to play, um, and as we're going to talk about, uh, actually grow produce and bring the community of the building together to actually grow products. So a sky allotment is the growth of plants and food on sustainable rooftops. So we see these mostly, we've been seeing them in residential schemes. Um, but there are, the, we're going to look at a couple of commercial, sort of large scale commercial allotments that we think are pretty incredible and we can take inspiration from those and take them to a smaller scale for a residential scheme. Um, so they look great, uh, rooftop gardens, and they, they obviously serve as a great retreat in the middle of a, a bustling city. But we believe the benefits of a, a rooftop garden and a rooftop allotment go, you know, way beyond the aesthetics. It's just uh, it's one way to transform into a truly sustainable project. So uh, environmentally sustainable, but also by growing produce, it's a, a truly sustainable, becoming a truly sustainable um, project and rooftop. So we've got a few um, projects that we've looked at um, very much on a large scale. Um, so in Paris, we have Nutter Urbain. I hope I haven't butchered that pronunciation, but um, this is this has over 14,000 square foot um, for produce, 2,000 pounds of fresh produce um, grown daily or harvested daily. Um, and it's targeting about five to 10 percent local um, consumption. And it feeds directly into bar and restaurant facilities that are connected um, with the rooftop farm. So it's, it's, it's truly transformed the space um, and it's been a really clever use of urban um, land, rooftop land, but it's also had a cultural impact because it's bringing, it's connecting more urban residents with where their food comes from, um, being able to experience it um, and being able to taste it um, and buy it. Next two examples are the Gaza Rooftop Paradise. So this was really, um, the post-war initiative for the people, by the people, for the people, and really community-driven, a way of creating a place for the community to come together, um, to grow much-needed produce, but also to work together. Um, and this is another example. This is definitely more um, kind of homemade. Uh, we can see that lots of things have been, you know, used, nothing's gone to waste, um, but it just shows that, that that these allotments can be created out of, you know, not very much, um, but can create a huge amount of reward uh, for the people who are who are using them. And then Brooklyn, Brooklyn Grange, uh, it's a, a very large initiative in, in the States. Um, so it's the leading intensive green roofing and rooftop farming business in the US. Um, so they have three farms across New York City. 
uh, and it's a it's a fantastic um, initiative. So again, it's there's the environmental impact of, of growing so much on, on these rooftops, on these spaces, but also again, it's the community, um, the events, the educational programming, the partnerships with local authorities and non-profit organizations um, to really promote sustainable living um, and how you know how pe more people can be involved in growing their own produce and this, these, this produce then goes back into the community through restaurants, through farmers markets and so on. So we took, we took those ideas, we took what we've seen um, over the last couple of years and we started seeing more, you know, when we're looking at schemes with landscape architects, more requirements for some sort of allotment area um, or seating around an allotment area. Um, so we wanted to take um, these these large scale ideas and sort of think, well, these can obviously they improve life for sort of people in the cities, but how can it improve um, residential rooftops? So we think there's a real opportunity to enhance the experience of, of living in a, a, a sort of a residential block by having this great space um, at the top of the building or on podiums. Um, so whilst allotments have traditionally been in, say, smaller towns or on the outskirts of towns and you've had to go to them, um, why not have them on the top of your building so you can tend to your allotment um, at the end of the day or group together with a number of people to look after your allotment? Um, and it makes it on a much more manageable scale. So the benefits of, a, of an allotment in the sky. So for, obviously for the community, so these are the people who are using the allotments um, and, the, and the people living in the, in the buildings. It's an opportunity to grow their own produce. Um, it can help reduce the heating and cooling costs by having that much vegetation on the rooftop. Um, also improves the overall quality of the air and the environment. So by being up on the rooftop and by having that much um, nature on the top of the roof, it's improving the air quality. Um, and actually exposure to nature and vegetation helps, um, has many psychological benefits. So increased productivity and help with anxiety. So it's just more relaxing being amongst nature. So if we can have that on a rooftop, um, it's much more accessible. Then for the environment, uh, you know, the more green that we can have in our, on our buildings, um, as well as at ground level, the better. So it's contributing to cutting CO2 emissions. It's helping to cultivate wildlife and biodiversity. Uh, we're protecting our roofing materials and it's improving air quality um, and water retention capabilities and helping to reduce the risks of flooding. And we saw from an economic perspective, because there are always lots of drivers for why people want to do this, there are lots of different stakeholders, um, but there could be commercial opportunities, whether it's increasing in the value of the property to tenants, um, or it's actually allowing people to hire the allotment. So there could be, a, a, a say, 20 allotments or 30 allotments available and they're, they're hired out just like you'd hire out a, a get parking or a garage space um, to residents in a, in a building. Um, and then to you, whether you're um, a landscape architect or a, a garden designer or a, or a contractor um, or a local authority, uh, so there are government-backed schemes available to green projects that support sustainable building projects. So we're seeing this as kind of that they're backed, but it's also becoming more and more of a, a requirement. Um, we're seeing, as I've said before, more, more and more schemes are offering rooftop facilities. And it's really an opportunity, if it's a new build, it's an opportunity to offer it and have, a, you know, some great ideas on design. If it's a it could be that it's an old an old space that could be um, completely renovated uh, to, to fit to suit a garden. Um, and the market's evolved in recent years, so it's making um, green projects. So this isn't such a, an unusual, expensive project. There are a number of, uh, whether it's companies like us that provide uh, furniture and, and hard landscaping products specifically for rooftops to, you know, contractors who really specialise um, in uh, rooftop projects, it's become much more accessible um, to have a, a rooftop space available. And yeah, a lot of projects only get the green, green light if there's green space. Um, so they only get the go ahead if that kind of green, you know, the CO2 um, emissions or the, or the greening has been, the greening factor has been um, answered with a rooftop space. Um, so things to think about in a sky allotment, so, so to include in your scheme. 
um, lots of things. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we were talking about this before before coming sort of on air. You know, you guys also have a lot of it. Some some of you will have had lots of experience in in doing these kind of projects. Some may not have, but this is from the projects that we've been involved in. Some of the things that have kind of come up either early on, sometimes later on. Um, uh, you know, thinking about the elements, it's a different type of exposure um, in terms of, uh, you know, where things are, are laid out. Um, it's higher up, so wind, sunlight. Um, thinking about water supply and irrigation. Um, so how are things going to be watered? How are they going to be maintained? If it's residents looking after um, an allotment, thinking about their access to water supply rather than a maintenance crew who would probably use water and, and electricity in a slightly different way. Um, thinking about how the community will be involved um, and how they will access the allotments. Um, logistics and sort of power and electricity supplies. So some of the things we think about, you know, how, how can you hide a lot of these? Uh, you want to make sure they're available, but they're also integrated or, or hidden underneath, whether it's the, the, the flooring, the decking, the paving, or, or within the furniture itself. Um, and then thinking about, you know, what type of roof, what type of roof is available or what type of roof is, is being built. So, there are lots of possibilities, um, but it, you know what what they're being used for is a is a main requirement. Um, maintenance, how again, how the, these allotments are going to be maintained, irrigation for sure, um, and then weight restrictions. Um, these are usual things for rooftop development. So whether it's an allotment or a garden, um, these would be things that you need to think about. Um, other things that we've seen um, that we that we really like. Uh, so obviously, so it started off as lots of sort of a space for people to sit and enjoy, maybe at the end of the day. So we saw a lot of seating to start with. Then we've started seeing more and more planting areas. So for more traditional planting, um, so plants to kind of be enjoyed. Um, and now we're seeing more interactive rooftop spaces. So where you can tend to plant, but we've also seen bee, we've also seen beekeeping. So we've seen hives on roofs or beekeeping areas. Um, social areas as well, areas for um, collecting um, solar energy, um, lighting we've seen as a big function of, of rooftops and the elements that the element that lighting plays in rooftop schemes because it's outdoors. Um, children's play areas, so we've seen um, small areas in podiums or rooftops where there are areas for children to play in, um, and storage areas. And this, I think, the more um, that wants to be done more that wants to be done on the rooftop story storage areas become important whether it's for maintenance crews or whether it's for uh residents themselves who want to maintain help with maintaining the planting or with their own allotment so where 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 equipment is stored uh right so the next thing i'm going to come on to now is there are three main ranges that we've we've used quite a bit on rooftops um, and that have that have helped with rooftop allotment schemes as well. So I'm going to walk you through the three main ranges which are um, union, um, railroad um, and ACRI. Now all of these are, are modular so they've all been designed and engineered to really maximize value so it means that we have uh, standard products um, really well designed to think about longevity, robustness, uh, being able to be um, maintained well. So thinking about if something needs to be replaced, it doesn't involve replacing the whole item. You know, individual slats could be um, maintained and replaced. But also being able to put the products together in a number of ways to create a very unique or bespoke scheme. So the whole point of all three of these ranges is that with CAD, with CAD blocks or, or with, 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 um, with the elements, they can be put together in a, in a number of ways. And Esteban will show us later on with ACRI, but the same goes for Union and for Railroad. Uh, we also really like these three ranges for rooftops because they're, they're lightweight and can be freestanding and they make the most of limited spaces so that they can be, they can be put together in configurations that really work either in a tight corner or can fill a longer area if needed. Um, environmentally friendly, so we use recycled um, and recyclable um, steel 
Um, the plastic in our union is recyclable plastic um, and our timber is um, sourced um, fairly. Um, retrofitting, so retrofitting options are available, means that once a product's in place, we can put armrests on later, we can add backrests, um, we can change planters into seating and so on. Um, that's with the unions, not the railways before, before Esteban looks at me in horror. <laughs> um, and yeah, the durability and the ability to withstand the elements. So the, the robustness of our designs is super important. They're built they're not built for just the, the first year, they're built to really last, you know, decades. Um, and that's super important with the products um, that we have. So I move on to Union, it's our, our first product here. So what's great about Union? Union is um, made out of uh, roto-molded um, polyurethane um, and it's lightweight. Um, so it's lightweight enough to be moved around. So what often happens, we see unions are often used actually as a type of parklet in city in city centres for local authorities or bids, but also a lot on rooftops. So it's when uh, a, a collection of seating wants to be put in one configuration, and you can see there are a number of configurations at the bottom of the screen there, but they can be changed easily because of the shape, uh, they fit together. Um, in a number of configurations. It's a really clever trapezoid geometry. So it, it allows you to have one common base that can be put together in multiple ways. Um, the top allows it to be um, a seat, a planter, which obviously doesn't have a seat, um, but would have a base. Um, and then the, you can see the half seat, half planter. So it gives a number of options. Um, and, the, and the way that the top is positioned means you have a number of options for seating, planting or just seating or just planting. These have also, we've started seeing interest in these also from a, from a socially distanced COVID um, uh, perspective. So this, these seats can actually be configured in a way that lots of people, you can have natural gaps. So rather than having a bench where everyone's sitting in a row and you've got to kind of tape off the middle area, you can actually naturally have people facing outwards or having more of a gap between where they're sitting. Um, yes, and as I said, these are being these are good on rooftops, and the planter has been um, useful for obviously small amounts of um, vegetation to be grown. So whether it's herbs or small amount of vegetables, or quite often it's plants or, or um, flowers. the The seating can also be used. So the seat, uh, the seating top. Um, there is there is a way that we could look at it to be um, storage as well. So it's uh, there's, there's, there would be a way of adapting it to, to work as storage. Okay, so here's some um, more pictures of the union. Uh, so yes, love, lightweight, um, tough polyethylene base, um, and so it's ideal for public areas where you know either it's a city centre or it could be um, a rooftop where it gets a lot of use um, and it might be moved around a number of ways uh, every week to, to suit with different social social um, configurations. Um, railroad, uh, this is another modular solution. Um, so it's a seating and planter uh, solution. So what's great about this is you can have seating with planting areas interspersed around the, the scheme. Um, and it's ideal for um, socially distant seating again, where hopefully we'll go back to socially close seating um, soon. Um, the other great thing about the railroad is we can um, retrospectively uh, or retrofit options such as armrests, backrests, because everything's bolted. Rather than everything being welded together, it's bolted together so it can be delivered to site, bolted together at a later date, various fixtures um, added. So the next um, page has a really, this is a lovely rooftop scheme. Um, so you can see where railroads being used. Um, to create quite a bespoke scheme actually. So it's a standard product, but it's been put together um, in a way that gives a really bespoke effect. Um, really creative design options in terms of shapes and curves. So you can see straights here, but there's actually um, a lot of the, 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 the 
product itself has uh, many curves as well in terms of the seating. Um, and just because the modules are standard, you can also configure it in, in all sorts of ways. So we, this is, we see this um, in many sort of commercial and retail outlets, um, as well as rooftops. Um, and because it's fairly lightweight, um, it's ideal for rooftops, roof gardens and podiums. Um, and it sits, it, you know, it can be bolted down, but it's also um, stable enough to just rest on the, rest on the, uh, the rooftop. Um, our last modular system that we're going to go through, and I, and I won't say too much about this because Esteban's got lots that, to please. say about Acri. Um, so Acri is our, our steel retaining wall. Um, it's our planter system, sort of large planting beds um, to become part of a wider scheme. Uh, so it's uh, in uh, mild steel. Oh, my screen's gone. Hang on, I'm just going to go back a slide, get my screen to come back on again. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Right, so we've got, um, so Acre is made out of steel, um, usually powder coated uh, mild steel, but we also um, do it in core 10 and stainless steel. So Acre 300 is our three millimeter plate range and it has a return, a return edge at the top, the top return. Um, usually in straight panels, so it's ideal for linear planters with corners, uh, although we have been known to, uh, to make curved sections of Acri 300. Acri 600 is made with 6 mil plate, um, so it doesn't have a top return, but it has a, a beveled edge um, to smooth over the, the, the edge. And this is ideal for straights or rolled um, sections. So it's great for really organic shapes and, and curvilinear shapes. So we've, we've seen some really cool, actually rooftop schemes that have had lovely organic shapes using Acri. Um, so the other great thing with Acri is our, the seating and the cladding can be retrofitted or, or fitted at the same time. So you don't have to have a special panel for um, the seating. The seating will fit anywhere on the on the Acri uh, steel retaining wall, um, and we can also make the seating for the curved sections as well. Uh, panel lengths are around two meters long. Um, the heights are between three hundred mil, and the top height is eleven hundred millimeters. And so, obviously, what's great about that is for, for example, an allotment, a very bespoke, quite easily a bespoke shape can be created, and the right height. Um, for the allotment can be used. So it's, it's creating a, a pretty much ready-made allotment um, that will fit the size of the rooftop and the scheme um, very easily. Um, we can, a great thing about the panel heights is we can allow for levels and clashes. Um, so whether that's on a rooftop or, in a, or at ground level, that's really important because, because of the size of these, levels have quite a big impact um, from one end to another, unlike sort of smaller smaller products. And as I said, there are optional add-ons for seats and benches, backrests, cladding, so that people really feel part of the planting area. Um, and we've seen some lovely schemes that add those, um, add those on so they're, they're part of the scheme. Um, so what we love about Act is the creativity, basically. We've created a, a, a product, you know, steel retaining walls, uh, you know, I'm sure many of you have seen these and, and, and they're great. It's the creativity to create large planting um, areas uh, that makes them so attractive and, and having curves and finishes and shapes. And what we've tried to do is allow that creative freedom to, to really stay. Um, but by making it modular, we've simplified how it's made it simpler and easier to specify and to install. So rather than sort of having to start from scratch with every single um, project or scheme, we've got a modular system where, where you can basically place together modules to create the shapes that you're looking for. So it's helping with the geometry and it's helping to um, rationalize some of the shapes that you might want to create. Something that we're really proud of. So we, we're with one of the only, or we are the only company that's actually tested tested the robustness of the steel retaining wall, um, and we've had it approved by Arup for its strength. Um, so when we initially um, developed this design, probably a year and a half ago, we went to Arup to ask them to test to do engineering testing in terms of how robust the panels are 
the bracketry um, and how it should be fixed. Um, and they gave a number of, they gave quite a lot of feedback, which we've in, integrated. And so they've approved um, ours uh, for strength, our, our system for strength. Uh, we like the retrofitting um, integrated seating, meaning that people can add it later on or take it away over the winter months, for example, and then add it back again in the summer. Um, it is made to order, but as I'm in my in, in the factory, we can we, that's basically um, it's super fast lead times. But because it's modular, we know the panels um, they go through the factory really quickly. Um, it's a sustainable and cost effective way of creating really large plant beds. Um, and we're really proud of the way that it's delivered. Um, so it's delivered pre-assembled, meaning that the panels, not the whole planter, would be a very large truck, but the panels are pre-assembled, but comes with all the brackets, all the fixings and really clear assembly instructions, especially with the integrated seating. Uh, one slide here that's interesting is this is really relevant for rooftops. So ACRI is, ACRI is a system that can be used at ground level um, and on rooftops. At ground level, we would, we would traditionally anchor the, the system, the brackets would be anchored into concrete pads. But for rooftops, we've developed a pedestal and tray system so that the, the, the walling is uh, fixed to the tray and pedestal, which is what keeps it. Um, secure and together rather than having to fix it to the rooftop itself. Um, so as we can see here, um, we can adjust the varying heights, which also um, overcomes leveling issues on rooftops. Uh, it's completely free, it's a freestanding layout. So you've got all sorts of flexibility in changing the setups. We have a galvanized tray that's perforated to allow for drainage. And what's great is that it's great for hiding pipes, electrical wiring um, and integrate irrigation systems and lighting. Um, final slide for me is really the finishes, are the finishes of um, Acre. So it can be finished in a, in a powder coated mild steel, core 10 or stainless steel. We've also started, we've, we've worked on some bespoke finishes as well. So various patterners um, that, we've, that we've looked at. Um, and then timber, we work with Iroko. Um, so either untreated for natural weathering or with a UV projective finish. And now I'm going to hand over to Esteban, who Thank has um, a lot to show us in terms of the actual models. Well, you, you have showed us a lot already about Acre. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to repeat a little bit the message again. So, um, uh, yeah, so let me just get back to the, to the, oh, 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 oh. There we go. I think we are all sorted. So um, yeah, so my name is Esteban. I'm the lead designer in the Infinity Tubes, and uh, yeah, in the I've, I've been in the company for like you know seven years nearly now. And in that time, we have developed all you know most of all these modular systems that we think it's a great way of uh, creating bespoke, customized, uh, adapted areas uh, to to uh you know uh to your own own schemes and and be able to adapt it to, to whatever is happening in, in your space um the agri works exa exactly the same way uh this is almost like a, a landscaping system that allows you to create uh planters and allows you to create planters with integrated seating in order to create uh, the, the space as you want so you basically you can design you can with a line almost or almost the landscape and then you can add on things later on and all that so the uh, the design or the development or the definition of the of the project will come um, along uh, quite easily in that sense uh, and it's a modular system. And, and as Catherine said, uh, we are very proud of, of our modular systems. It's not, sometimes these modular systems, they look like a constraint for the creativity. And I feel it like it's, it's the opposite way. It's, it's, a, it's an, a tool that allows you to create your own space based on a, on a, you know, on a set of tools that, that we're giving you. So, uh, you know, I, to me, these are like big Legos that you put together and it takes me back to my childhood. And that's probably why these, these modular systems are, are the way they are at the moment. Um, back to Acre, as, uh, as, as Catherine has said, we've got two different options. One is more square, more, more for rectilinear, rectilinear uh, uh, kind of volumes areas, and that will be the Acre 300. 
uh, we can, you know, we fold all these things, like creating different angles and all that, but anything that without a curve is something that we can do like this. Uh, if you want something that is more organic, more uh, full of curves and, and connecting curves and tangents uh, and, and all that, the Acre 600 version of the Acre 600 version of the product will be your choice. Um, so um, that's a, a very simple choice to do. Um, and then this this product was kind of uh, conceived to be in the street scene, but with this uh, pedestal and tray system that uh, that Catherine has uh, has um, explained, we have taken this to the rooftop, meaning that you can create freestanding planters, big planters. Uh, without the need of uh, perforating any waterproofing that it might be on, on top of your roof terrace, allowing a little bit of space between the um, the, the steel planter and the and the and the waterproofing in order to pass cables, in order to pass um, uh, water pipes, but also allowing the, the the water drainage to go down and be able to you know, follow the levels that uh, your your roof terrace is going to have. So the combination of, of those three different products, almost three different modular systems, almost put it together, it allows us to you know offer a quite neat solution uh, to create planters and planting spaces uh, in in roof terraces in uh, the roof of the of the buildings. So I'm going to take the Acre 600 and, as an example. The Acre 300 works exactly the same way, but you know with with the curvature on this, it's going to allow me to explain a little more the possibilities and and open a little bit the the the, the imagination of, or the inspiration of of you guys to you know to take to take this to to your to your um, projects and and start designing with it. So it's it's a modular system. So each individual panel that you can see in there between each support that is inside is a pre pre-welded thing that pre-welded module that we're going to send to site individually and with the labels and all and the assembly instructions for you to be able to you know create that that space and each each panel is linked to get to the next one with these supports and then the supports are fixed to either a ground a ground uh, foundation or the pedant tray system that we have uh, been discussing earlier uh, so it's quite simple to to you know it's, it's a modular system is quite simple to put together and to assemble together uh, you know the, the the gaps are, are sealed we, we we supply this with a with a sealant that when it's all bolted together it, everything gets compressed and that doesn't it, it doesn't allow uh, the, the panels to open and also it doesn't allow the water to run through and you see in the you know like a humidity line in between the, the panels on top of this, and that's a good thing about this modular system, you can add on you can add on uh, your, your seating spaces. It's basically, they, they be, the modules they basically match the planter modules. Uh, you can add you, know, you can do continuous runs, and the the line between the different modules will be invisible. The the gaps will hide all that. Uh, you can add on fronts. Especially, you know, that's more for comfort areas. Uh, you know, try to maintain the, you know, the, the knee, the knee space or the the heel space uh, of the of the users away from the from the steel. Particularly, particularly good to do this when it's a core ten planter or something that you know might get dirty and all that. Well, it's it's quite it's much nicer to be against a, a timber rather than a, rather than steel. Uh, and we can add on backrest as well. And all works in a modular way and all works in a continuous way so you, it's almost seamless you you know it, it builds up very organically and it allows you to create these kind of you know very attractive areas with basically ma not made to measure not made to measure products but standard products that we control and we can control the quality and the dimensions and we might, can make sure that they're going to work because they've been tested uh, yeah, and the combinations as, as you might require. In the end, um, you know that's that's how that's why I was saying this opens a little bit the uh, the inspiration. This allows you to you know to uh, empower your creativity and create this kind of this kind of products rather than you know not being sure if it's going to be then be able to, to be manufactured. If you use our 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 modular system, you know that we, you, we're going to be able to create it later. Um, and yeah. And that's essentially what how the how the Acre system works. So now I'm going to show you a few cut blocks 
that is is basically that the Lego that the Lego pieces that I use in 2D to, in order to create those those spaces. And hopefully, if there are landscape architects in here, they might like to see how these things can be then worked out. So you can see I've got two files in here. Is the Acre 300 and the Acre 600. Again, I'm going to stay in the Acre 600 because it's going to allow me to to show you a little bit more. So I'm going to create a, a little a little space in here. So I'm going to start with with a with a circular part. So I'm going to make like, um, you know, like a half semicircle in that area. So you can put them together quite quickly. Copy. Esteban, sorry, it's Catherine. Yes. I think yes. you need to stop sharing your PowerPoint and then share ah. the CAD screen because we can still see the, yeah. Sorry about that. I That's went, right. I went and, I went and play with the toys without it's showing you. It's very exciting. That. <laughs> that is, that is so rude of me. Sorry about that. Are you are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay. So, sorry. I, I'll present you the toys. So uh, you've got the planter modules at the top. That you can see that they are the straight units with the different dimensions, uh, and then the curve units and the corner units. Uh, you know, and with a a note uh, telling you well the radius, the, the the degree of angles that you know the angle that it it requires and all that. And on the right on the right hand side you'll see the different elevations. So the different heights that we can provide this for. And we will talk about heights later if, if you want. And I'm sure there will be a lot of questions about heights and, and all that. Then you will have the seating modules later on uh, that they go on top of basically they are the, the second layer, if you want to call them like that. So uh, that they will go on top of the, of the planters. And then you've got the backrest modules and the armrest if you want to as well, in order to create those things. So you've got the, the plan views and the elevations. So I'm going to start with the, with the, uh, with the plan views. So I'm going to create a quick, uh, a quick uh, module. So I've, I've brought them from, from here. I copied a couple. That's what I was doing while nobody was watching. And uh, yeah, I, I will just start rotating these things and, and assembling them together. It's, it's pretty simple. So you can see there is there's some sort of geometry to help you out in order to do that. So once you, you can bring that, uh, you know, and, and constrain it from, from point to point, uh, or you could use the, the, the edge of the plant and I will start creating this, this kind of uh, details. Um, if then, for example, I want to create, I want to add on, um, um, a straight module, as simple as, as copying it across and, uh, you know, going there and it will start building the geometry of your, of the, of the area that you want to do. You know, perhaps you want to do that first with, with a spline or with, a, with some lines put together and then you can start working with the modules on top of that. That's up to you. Uh, you probably have like a, you know, a plan view of your space and perhaps that, that will help you out on, on creating these, these spaces. Um, so for example, I'm going to start doing a, a corner backwards. So I'm going to use the, the, the concave part of it. So I'm going to you know, open, open the, 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 the planter a little bit more. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it, I'm going to do a 90 degree angle there. Uh, perhaps I can then use the opposite one. So I'm going to use this one here. And I'm going to take it in position. There you go. I'm going to start closing it because, you know, it's, it's, if not, it's going to get quite big. Uh, copy. I'm going to bring it from that point to the corner. And then I'm going to rotate it. It's quite simple. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to put another another module of this, copy it across, rotate it. There we go. Perhaps I can take this one and start closing now. So copy, or perhaps I'll take it from here. It'll be easier. This one, I'm gonna copy it. and place it there and I can rotate it on that point. Oh, I did it a bit bad. And, uh, there you go. And then let's close it now. Rotate. 
say this one. Move it across and copy that. Place it in there. Yes, sorry about this, guys. Let me move it up. And there you have it. So it's an L shape kind of standard thing with, you know, if you want to do it curve and all that. For example, the a good thing about the modular system is like then you can start playing with the module. So for example, you might want to, you know, get rid of that one and add on the same, but, you know, circular. So as simple as bringing this across and put it in there. And there you have it. You've got your your basic shape with a with a with a you know more more a, a different area. Perhaps it's a good area to put a, put a sitting in there, for example, to create a kind of little alcove. So you can then start bringing the, the your second layer, for example. So in this case, as we were using the concave version of the of the of the uh, of the planter and the the number ten, which is means like one meter radius. We just need to find the, the exact one in terms of modules in the sitting and as simple as bringing it across and it will go it will go well in the position so that's how you know you can start creating your 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 sitting spaces uh perhaps you, you want to add on another panel you know the, the two meter long panel in there and then you bring it from the corner to the corner, so there you have it. You've got like a little sitting space that goes uh, that wraps nicely around the, the the plant that you just created, and the same with a with a um, with a backrest. So the backrest view, so you can take it to corner and there you go. That's the kind of plant that I, I would like to create, especially for example, if you're if you're building. If your building is in that shape, well, it's something that you might want to, to create like this, or you know, you can ex extend, you can you can do many things in this in this kind of uh, configurations. So um, and then that's you can use this to create the shapes that you want. You you might want to create a you know, more organic way of doing these things, or more a much more straight or, or geometrical shapes. That all depends on how you want to divide these plants, how you want to create the different planters to suit the the geometry of your of your roof. Uh, you can create more, more, you know, almost every single every single geometry that you might come up with. And these are modular. This is a modular system. That doesn't mean that these are the only modules that we can manufacture. Of course, we can manufacture things to measure for any special any special um, um, geometry or, or you know, problems that they might be on site, access and all that, we can always make these things to measure to suit better. But this is a very good starting point to control the geometry and to, and to you know, uh, explore possibilities. And then we will see, you know, if there are items that we cannot create with these modules, we can always make them to suit. Um, in terms of the elevation, it's, um, that's when uh, the pedantry system uh, comes to help uh, and, if you want to create your own section view to add on to to your drawings and all that you can also use these these modules and these 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 cut blocks so you will need to choose the the overall height of it and you will need to count as well the the uh, dimension below the finished pavement level that you're gonna you're gonna mark so um yeah so essentially I've got prepared in here like, a, like our pedantry system module in there. So if this is going to be the starting point where you're going to plonk the the, uh, the planters on, you can bring, for example, the 600 height. Uh, you can bring it along. Copy from the corner. You can place it in there. Yeah, if you want to add on the back, the armrest or, or sorry, the, the, the seating on armrest or, or backrest, you can bring the elevations in there. So every single bench can be fitted into every single height of it. Some of them might not make uh, much more sense now, but uh, when you finish the level in front of it, it might it might do, for example. So let's let's bring this one along. So um, let me show you that. So if you bring this to the corner 
and you place it there. That's how you know you can use this section uh, in your drawings, and we will know what you would like to to, to manufacture. Um, it's important to to understand that you know this is this level is where the you know the finished structure of the of the rooftop might be, but that might not be the 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 area where you want you know your you know the users to to um to walk. Normally, these kind of roof terraces they've got like a, a raised uh, paving. That is sometimes well, sometimes I'm, I'm quite more often than than usually uh, using these, these kind of pedestals to help to hold the trays. So you will have in the other side of the of the planter, you will have the same similar detail. I'm going to do like a very like a very schematic thing. So you, you might have a pedestal that that takes your your tiles until there, and then your tiles are going to cover that area here. So this will be where your people you know walk and and that's yeah and that's and that's the level where the where the bench uh, where the top of the bottom of the planter is going to go and that's a good that's that's what we were discussing earlier that uh, you've got all this space uh, below the, the the tiles and below the planter to pass any cables any irrigation anything that you might need to uh, in order to put uh, you know plugs sockets uh, water you know, uh, water mains, whatever it is, it can be all hidden later on underneath the, the planter, or pass, or pass them inside the planter uh, from from the from below. Basically, that's that's how we would like to do that. And then, you know, the overall height, as we were marking, will be will be the overall height of of the of the planter minus this this little step in here. So that's why suddenly. Uh, a 500 millimeter planter. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a, a 500 millimeter high planter. You will need to deduct how much you're going to raise your level on the on the paving area. So you might end up taking this to the extreme. You might end up with with this. Um, let me. Or if you're creating like, like a you know a planter for a, for a sky allotment, you might not need the, the benches. But you might need all this space in order to put all the soil that you might require in order to um, to plant your your vegetables, and then your tile instead of being in this area, it might be quite much higher. For example, if you want if you want people to then you know access and jump in there and work, for example, in them, or the other or the opposite direction. So if if you want you know the the users to to use this as a raised plant when they can you know manipulate things by hand in a in a much higher space you might prefer to, to leave it like that so this opens you the you know the the possibilities and is is now you know to the is up to you to decide how you're going to use this these modular systems in order to create the the space you want so i hope that was clear and it was uh, uh Amusing. I personally love playing with these toys. As you can see, I can get in my own in my own uh, world and start and start making planters. But I hope they will be useful for you guys. And um, yeah, um, that's all for me. So uh, I'm gonna stop sharing the the screen. I might bring the I might bring this again. Share the screen. Thank you, Esteban. No worries. And uh, yeah, let me just bring this to the front. Yeah. So, yeah, well, th there was a few case studies that I would like to show you in here. Well, you have seen the the, the one with Great Dragon House and and how we can, you know, create three standing things on top of roof terraces and no need to fix anything because of the weight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lightweight and it's good that it's coming modules so you can bring them to to your to your roof. But then when it's all bolted together and filled with soil this doesn't move. So that's that's a good thing about railroads and that's why it's quite interesting product to use a, a, in gardens here. Yeah. This is an Acri this is an Acri 300 in this case so you can see the the trays and how the how the planter is being uh, assembled together and then you can see the cables that of lighting that they wanted to put inside uh, that how they are coming in and also like you know like permeable uh, membranes so the the um, the soil doesn't come out of the uh, of the of the planter through the gap, the holes that the pedantry system has got for drainage. Uh, and yeah, you can create like very very big, very large areas where you can use for normal plants, herbs, um, the way you want it. And uh, yeah, a few a few more pictures and how 
in this case, for example, how we were wrapping up the, the, the space against, the, against the, 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 the balustrades in order to create spaces, you know, for people to enjoy the views of the, of the roof terrace and add on a little bit of greenery and add on a little bit more value. I mean, these this kind of uh, roof terraces add quite a lot of value, especially in private property, because it's, 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 it's a shared space, but it's a space that is, is, quite, is quite flat, you know, it, it, it maximizes what a building offers. It's not only your apartment, it's, uh, it's something else you can go out, visit, um, you know, bring people here and, and use this space. So that's us. So uh, if you got any questions, so if there is any comments or uh, anything that it wasn't clear, please let us let us know. Yeah, does anyone have any questions? Um, I'm interested if, if anyone's working or, or works regularly on rooftops or allotments. I don't know if we need to. No. Anybody? No. Okay. I had one quick question, Esteban, about the oh. geometry. Yeah. The you've shown how the geometry is uh, helps with, with with the modular system. The geometry helps kind of make things clear from the start. Yes. I know we've had examples where it's been much more of a free form and that takes that's much more that, that takes quite a lot of work to then interpret into drawing and <laughs> manufacturing. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about you know why why is it that, that why is it that our modular system helps much more with geometry and what will it but it doesn't limit I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think it limits. It helps. It, it helps to um, you know uh, get rid of uh, lots of little questions later about geometry. So if you use our modular system, all the modules are going to be tangent. Uh, you're not going to have problems later on fabricating and all that. When you start, you know, free flowing, it, it's very easy to draw. But then it's you know basically we need to roll uh, steel to make that those shapes. And um, you know, very small changes that nobody's going to perceive later on can add on a lot of cost and a lot of uh, problems in the manufacturing process. So that's our way of, you know, getting rid of all those uh, headaches and problems later on from the very beginning. So if if the geometry is quite rationalized and is is modular and is repeat is repeatable and is repeated, it's going to make the manufacturing process much faster and also from my perspective it's going to look neater it's going to look nicer in a way i mean call me call me engineer or whatever but you know when you understand the geometry of the object that you're doing it kind of adds a little bit more of um, aesthetic value in my in my perspective in my from my from my view because i understand why it is like that so with the modular system we get rid of all the problems and help you know allow them to you know allow whoever is using it to create their own their own uh, uh, geometry to be honest yeah thank you that's great nice. great well it's two minutes past six thank you a few people have left us but thank you for everyone else who's who stayed on um and we this a survey will be sent out so we look forward to your feedback um, and look forward to hopefully seeing some of you again on a screen or in real life. Thank you, Thanks everybody. So Goodbye. Bye.